Welcome to How I Raised It, the podcast that goes behind the scenes with entrepreneurs who've raised capital. We uncover the tips, tricks, and techniques they use to get investors to write a check. Strap in and turn it up. Hi, welcome to another episode of How I Raised It, produced by Foundersuite.com. Today I have Sean Bruner of Avant Stay coming to us from West Hollywood, Los Angeles. How's your day going? Hey, fantastic. Great to be here. Thanks, guys. Yeah, good, good. So uh, we're going to do a, a rapid fire one today. Uh, what does Avant Stay do? So, so what we do is we're, we're in the, in the short term rental industry. So we're bringing the hotel experience to short term rentals, specifically curated for groups. So if you've ever stayed at an Airbnb before, of course. Yeah. So, so what, what we do is we take, we take that experience that you've had in Airbnb and, and, and really create consistency around um, what we consider an elevated stay for groups. So obviously technology is a big piece of what we do. So whether it's on the front end and creating an amazing digital experience for the customer, uh, but also leveraging technology to, to really create and elevate the experience in home. What does that mean? I, it's funny. I'm hearing the word elevate, elevated experience a lot these days. Yeah. I feel like, uh, but what does that mean in your context? So is it just nicer properties or what? Yeah. So, so, so good question. So elevated experience, obviously the experience economy, I think is driving a lot of the conversation around where, where people are spending their time and money. Um, and obviously we're, we're big into the millennial ethos and, and how do you, how do you create and build um, an experience that people want to spend money on instead of on goods? Um, so for us, it's yes, it's it's finding the home. Obviously, compliance is, is a big piece of it. Um, but then it's curating the group experience to have experiential amenities across the board. So whether that's uh, pool toys or a chess set or um, integrated uh, Netflix and all the TVs or having a chef's kitchen or just walking out in the backyard. Imagine having a 15 person table set up for you. So if you're traveling with 10 to 15 people or even, you know, six to eight people, you want to make sure that you have all of these amenities and all these experiential games in home when you arrive. I think one of the worst things is when you show up for a vacation or a business trip and the first thing you're doing is running off to the store to stock the fridge or you're running off the store to buy, you know, any of these games. What you're going to do is you're going to show up, the fridge is stocked, the house is ready to go. All the games, all the things that you want to do and experience in home are ready for you. And anything that you need, um, obviously, you click the button and, and, and you can order it from us as well. Interesting. And so the homeowners, are you kind of coaching them on different things they need to stock and provide, like you're saying the chess set or whatever it might be? Yeah. Kind of. It, it's, it's, so we, we have a big design team over here, interior design team. We design everything on our own. Um, so all the owners um, are not involved with what goes into these properties. So we've done a lot of testing into what people want. Um, and that kind of drives how we build the experience into the homes. And, and obviously from our perspective, I think the digital experience is, is super, super important. But what's just as important, if not more important these days, is that analog experience. When you go and travel, you want to be with your friends, your family. And our slogan is travel with the people you love. So you want to be there and you want to put down a lot of those, you know, put down your phone and really immerse yourself into the moment, be present. So I think that that's something that, that we try to provide is, is we give you a reason to never leave the home, but then we're in cities like Palm Springs, San Diego, uh, Scottsdale, Tahoe, where you can go out and, and have a great time as well. I was, yeah, before this call, I was doing a few searches, uh, in Palm Springs. I love it down there. You've got some cool properties in Palm Springs. I might have to check that out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Palm Springs has become the, the Mecca for kind of experiences and festivals and art and culture. It really has, has, has been transformed over the years and it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, there's an event now going on this desert X, obviously Coachella festival comes up next month and then you have stagecoach desert trip, which was, uh, you know, a couple years ago, they're talking about bringing back. So there's just so much that's going on out there. And I think uh, bringing, you know, your friends and family together to go stay at a home, have your own private pool, your private experience, and then to be able to have those events around the corner is fantastic. 
<laughs> There's cool houses too. For my parents' 50th wedding anniversary in December, we rented a mid-century modern house there and actually recreated their 1968 wedding down to like pretty specific details. So, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, the mid-century modern look is obviously uh, big out there right now. So you'll see a, a number of our houses are designed, you know, with that kind of experience in mind. How many markets are you guys in? Is it uh, and is it just markets that are kind of destination like Palm Springs or or what? So we're in, in nine markets today. Um, we, we do think that, that this kind of, I know that this u- word is used a lot, but, but the experiential component of a city is super important. Um, so thinking about San Diego and Scottsdale and how those are larger markets, but obviously have this strong event or tourism component that makes it such an attractive place to go visit. Um, we're then in Newport, Coachella, Tahoe, uh, Paso Robles, um, so in, in Temecula, Temecula sits right outside of Los Angeles and it's this amazing wine country that, that frankly, um, not enough people know about. It's really an incredible place. So yeah, we're, we're expanding really in the Western hemisphere right now and, and starting to, to push East and, and, um, anytime you guys are thinking about traveling in, in Southern California or, or even in Arizona, you know, come to the site and, and, and happy to accommodate you guys. And are you acquiring properties that are not on Airbnb? I mean, is this an exclusive arrangements you have with the homeowners? Are you, are you paying them more and they'll give you exclusivity or how's that work? Yeah. So, so we, we integrate with Airbnb. We integrate with BRBO, HomeAway and 30 other platforms. Look at Airbnb is to Avant stay as Expedia is to Starwood, right? There's, there's, I think it's, it's interesting because a lot of people talk about short-term rental brands and they think of Airbnb first. Um, but when you think of hotel brands, you're not necessarily thinking of Expedia first, right? So realistically, we, we are a brand and we exist on Airbnb. And I think Airbnb is one of the most incredible companies ever created, changing the way that we travel and live. And it's just this enormous platform and, and, and they've built an incredible company. And so we, we definitely leverage their platform. You can come direct and book direct as well. Um, but that is, that is our, our relationship with Airbnb. It's very strong. And, and we, you know, we expect to, to, to be on Airbnb forever, really. Are the properties on Airbnb and you're kind of a layer, this experiential layer on top of it? Is that an accurate sort of way of describing this? Or, or No, I think, I think you, you know, what, when you go to Airbnb, there's 4.5 million listings, right? There's over 2 million hosts. So sometimes you can get overwhelmed with everything that's on there. So we like to, we like to think that Avant Stay stands out on Airbnb and all these platforms, whether it's our, our photos, the design, the description. We're not the, you know, the house that, that you run around with your iPhone and, and take a picture and, and get off to, you know, to, to on vacation, right? This is a very thoughtful, curated design that, that hopefully, um, you know, the customers appreciate and, and when you show up, you're getting what's what's in the pictures, right? There's an authenticity to what we do, um, so so that that that's how we like to stand out on 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 the platforms. And then, of course, I think you will see that there is this experience vibe that you get from the photos, whether it's the life that's brought out or whether it's the staging, um, all the different experiential amenities that you'll find in the photos. This is not a place that you're going to live in. This is a place that you're going to have a great experience in. Yeah, cool. It sounds great. All right. Let's talk about raising money for this concept. How long have you guys been around? How much have you raised? And um, how many rounds? Yeah, so so um, can't disclose all, all the rounds, but we've, we've, we've done or all, all, the, all the funding. We've done two rounds to date. Um, and, and we've been around for coming up on two years. Um, so obviously, fundraising is a big piece of, of, of any uh, venture, venture back company or any startup. And, uh, you know, happy to, happy to talk through it, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun getting to talk to, you know, these different cohorts of investors and how they look at businesses and what's important to them because it really varies across the board. Yeah. I see the most recent, uh, series a round and that sounds like that was a bullpen capital led deal. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Bullpen, um, led our, our, our last round and they're just can't say enough good things about bullpen, absolute incredible investors, great partners to work with. 
And, um, you know, they have a, an amazing portfolio of companies as well that, that uh, is, is very supportive across the board. The, uh, I, don't, I don't really know those guys, but they took over. We, Founder Suite had an office space at Second and Howard for a couple of years and then finally got priced out of it because it's a really hot startup area and bullpen yeah. took, took over the office space. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, no, they are, it, that was the one in, in, on, in uh, downtown San Francisco? Or? Yeah, South yeah. Basket. Yeah. Amazing, amazing space. It's so cool. Yeah. I miss it. Really, <laughs> no, I wish, I wish my office looked like that, but it's, no, it's fantastic. And I, you know, again, I mean, bullpen is, if you guys are out there fundraising, um, definitely reach out to bullpen. They're phenomenal. So did you bootstrap it before this? Or actually you said there was another round before that. Was it an angel round or what, what was the. Yeah. Well, it was a seed round. Um, and, and so kind of all strategics and some smaller adventure folks as well. Um, but yeah, the, the, you definitely, I think you, you bootstrap in the initial stages cause you got to prove concept. So you gotta, you gotta show that, that you, you know, you put your blood, sweat and tears into it. So I would always recommend, um, putting everything you got into it initially and, and making sure that um, you believe in it too, because you, you got to put your skin in the game, right? And so that, that to me, before you get started, um, sometimes, you know, early in your career, you go out there and you kind of expect a raise on a, on a, on a PowerPoint deck and it just doesn't work that way. You really got to be able to prove the concept out and then um, people will listen because you put your money where your mouth is or your time where your mouth is and that pays off. Did you, um, when you're out raising, you know, did you have some pretty good traction or is it mostly vision plus, you know, proof of concept or kind of what were you pitching at the time? It's, it's, it's always an evolving process, right? It's a, you're learning every day, you're iterating every day. When you're trying to disrupt and build a big company, you, you definitely don't have all the answers day one, nor should you. Because if you think you have all the wrong answers or right answers, you're not going to be um, agile enough to, to, to pivot and capture opportunity. Agility is probably the most important component of running a startup. And, and, and so I do think that that agile quotient is, is incredibly important as you go out, whether it's raising or running or operating um, and building. And so for, for us, we talk to hundreds of people, right? I think the first you want to be asking for advice, ask for advice from as many people that you know and respect as possible um, and take that advice. And a lot of times through that advice, you'll get people that are interested in what you're doing. Um, and, and, and those are the people that you want to focus on and hone in on once you're ready to raise. How many investors do you think you talked to, 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 to raise the, the round? Hundreds, hundreds of about you always, I mean, for, for me, I think it's, it's, just as important to um, get different perspectives and, and, and to get advice and understand, you know, because these people have seen everything, right? And, and so um, it's helpful to, to have those, those different insights. At some point though, you're gonna get conflicting viewpoints across the board, right? Some people love it, some people don't, and, and, and you just can't let the nose drag you down because um, that's, you know, not everybody's going to believe in your vision. Not everybody needs to believe in your vision. Right. And so I think that that's a key piece is it's, it's good to weather the nose, but it's important, uh, and important to get feedback from a lot of different perspectives, but, but it's important to stay focused on what you believe in. When you were, yeah, no, it's good. I think when you were, and you've heard this, I've heard this strategy a little bit where you, you know, if you want money, ask for advice. If you want advice, ask for money kind of thing. Right. Did you actually go out like, you know, talking to a hundred investors, telling them you're asking for advice and then seeing which ones had enough interest that maybe they brought up fundraising or how did you sort of turn an advice into an actual, Hey, let's talk dollars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I kind of do. I mean, there, you know, there's people that say you're always fundraising. And then there's people that say that, you know, when you're fundraising, you're fundraising and when you're not, you're not right. So there, there's, there's no right way to do this. Everybody does it differently. I think um, it's, it's, you always want to be talking and getting advice and then you want to launch a process. And I think it, it is important to launch a process and to be, and, and to, 
you know, that, that becomes, that becomes much more effective than just spraying. Right. So that I think is an important piece, but, but generally speaking, you should always be talking to people, you know, around the industry and, and getting a feel for what's going on and, and how successful you are. But um, yeah, it, it, it really is. It's a balance. And I, I don't, I can't say that there's one right way to do it because I've seen it work a number of different ways. What, um, you must have got some headwinds or pushback of just the 800 pound grill in the space being Airbnb. I mean, do you get, yeah, I guess maybe the question is, you know, I'm sure people are saying, hey, couldn't Airbnb do this or start a division to do this or isn't that a competitive threat? And how do you sort of raise money when you have this potential gorilla, 800 pound gorilla, you know, in the market? Yeah. Um, I mean, we think, we think Airbnb is incredible. So um, Airbnb wants great product on their, on their platform. Um, and we'd like to think that we provide a lot of great product. I think one of the questions is why can't Airbnb do it? Well, the market for us is it's 170, 150 billion dollar market. So it's such a big market. There's really not one person that can do this completely on their own. It, it would it would almost be as if you said Marriott exists, should Hyatt, should Four Seasons, should Ritz exist. So there's there's a lot of there's a number of billion dollar plus hotel brands, um, and it's my belief that there's going to be a number of billion dollar plus short term rental brands in the space and it's not necessarily a winner take all space on, on, on the brand side. I think there's going to be some, some big, big winners out there. And, and uh, you know, if Airbnb ends up having a hospitality brand, I think that that's interesting. I'm not sure that that's the, the, the route that they want to go, but, but certainly um, certainly there's room for some massive brands. And obviously we expect, to, to do something very different a lot of in, 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 in the space. And so for us, I don't see a brand out there that's specifically looking at the space like we're looking at. And there, there's, there's other ways to, to, to operate short-term rentals, right? There's a number of different opportunities out there. Kind of jumping around a little bit, but how did you identify bullpen as sort of the right fit for you? And how did you get in touch with them? How did you get in front of them? All that stuff. So bullpen was a recommendation from um, a very close friend of mine, and uh, they they you know they said that hey you, you need to bullpen was on our list, and so one of the things that we do is you, you prepare a target list, right? You want to prepare a target list because there's time is is everything. Time, how you utilize and prioritize your time in the process is so important. Really important to prepare a target list and know who you're speaking to. So it encourage people to look up the venture firms, look at the partners, make sure you're going to the right partner, make sure that there's companies in the portfolio that you respect, admire, um, and that have some, you know, some synergies with, with what you do, because typically that's going to be helpful. So bullpen um, is invested in a number of disruptive um, real estate and technology companies. And that is why we targeted bullpen is because, they understand, they have incredible technology companies, they understand real estate and, and, and hospitality and the evolution of the way people are traveling and living. So um, for us, that was really, really important. And also again, just being efficient with our time, um, bullpen was, was, was a perfect fit for us. And then I, um, I see a bunch of the other investors, I don't know how much is public or not, but looks like you had a fair number, at least PitchBook is saying you had seven investors on the round. How did you kind of fill out the round with all these others? Um, were you already talking to them and then you got bullpen as a lead and then you uh, brought the others along or was there some other process here? Yeah, I mean, for, for me, I think it's important to get people with different skill sets in the round. So for us, we wanted people that understood technology, people that understood um, real estate, hospitality, and brand. So those were the four key pieces that we wanted in the round. And so we were much more interested in getting a few experts from those different arenas to, to fill out a round versus, um, you know, one investor that, that's exceptional at one thing. I think for what we're doing, it was more important. Now, that's not the case for everybody, though. 
you know, they, some, some, if you're, if you're a healthcare company, you know, you, you don't need, you don't need a, somebody who understands brand in, in your round, right? You need, you need a, a, an amazing healthcare investor. So um, again, teach their own on that. But, but for us, that was the right fit. Cool. All right. I promised we'd do a short one and we will. Um, any other tips or advice, things you would do differently if you were starting fundraising all over again uh, as a, yeah. Anything we haven't covered? No, no, I, I would, I, I think that we covered, covered a lot. I mean, from my perspective, um, you know, it's, it's perseverance is, is, is absolutely key. Um, there's, there's a lot of great ideas out there that, that don't get executed. And so, you know, persevere through that and, and make sure that, um, you're really, you, you really believe in what you're doing and, 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 um, between believing in yourself and perseverance, there, there's there's really no way that, that you're gonna get stopped so i think that that's a, a big piece of this all right sean good stuff i will uh yeah i like your properties i'm gonna have to check them out next time i plan to go to palm springs there's some good stuff on there um we, we'd be happy to, to offer a discount code to the to the to the viewers as well sure uh, what do you so we can offer avant 2019 um so a b a n t two zero one nine uh, for two hundred fifty dollars off any day. That's killer. That's great. And uh, point people to just avantstay.com, correct? Yeah, go to avantstay.com. Obviously, follow us on on Instagram. We we have a incredible design team that's posting stuff on Instagram, and and and, and you can see where we're heading. We, you can see you know a lot of the the ways in which we're we're curating the design and the experience. So I think that those are yeah two best places to to find us. What's your favorite property that you've either stayed in or seen on the site? Do you have a favorite? Yeah, I mean there there's there's a property in um, Scottsdale that that you know has it all. So it's called Hummingbird on the site. It's truly incredible, and um, would encourage everybody to to get their friends together and go go enjoy it. It's an amazing house. Sounds cool. Sounds cool. All right. Have a good weekend. Thank you so much. And uh, awesome. best of luck with the month's day. Thank you so much. Have a great one. Thanks, Nathan.